open. We have a uh, first item on our agenda is a presentation on reinstatement of paper towels in student bathrooms. And we have a guest with us this evening. So I'll pass it along to you if you want to introduce yourself and you can take it from there. All right. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Weiss. I'm a junior at hand, and I'm here to present a petition for the reinstatement of paper towel dispensers in our bathrooms. Okay, so the issue is that this year, at the beginning of the year, we walked into school to find that all of the paper towel dispensers had been removed. Now, in my time at hand, we've always had paper towels that may partially be because of COVID, but it was just normal to us. And currently now, our only option is to use the jet hand dryers, which are ineffective, very disruptive, they're inconvenient in regards to time, and frankly, they're really unhygienic. So it would just make everyone's day a little better if we were to be afforded the opportunity of using paper towels. Um, the first issue is the disruptiveness factor. Um, the hand dryers have an extremely loud startup noise, which disrupts both the hallway and nearby classrooms. So students working in the hall for a quiet place to work will be continually disrupted by the noise. And even when the classroom doors are shut, you can still hear them in a lot of classrooms, which actually frequently prompts both teachers and students to interrupt lessons and ask, what was that noise? Um, which is disruptive to the learning process. Uh, next is functionality. Hand dryers take a lot longer to use than paper towels, which causes students to be out of class for longer and they could potentially be missing valuable instruction. Additionally, I found that in order for the hand dryer to stay on, one can have to be in a very precise location underneath the unit. Otherwise, it'll shut off after about three seconds. And then you have to turn it on again and again and again. And this startup noise is the loudest part, so if you have to keep turning it on, it's even more disruptive. The units also don't really dry your hands that well, and in some of our bathrooms, none of them will turn on. Uh, next is hygiene. So because of the amount of time it takes and the ineffectiveness, a lot of students will opt, opt to leave the bathroom with wet hands, which not only is that just disgusting, but it also actually increases the amount of germs on one's skin as moisture breeds bacteria and effectively undoes the benefits of the hand washing that they just did. Um, drying with paper towels makes it easier to fully dry one's hands and it's far more hygienic. It can also actually reduce the germs even more than just washing your hands because of the friction of drying. Um, many studies have also found that jet hand dryers disperse germs around the bathroom. A study done in Connecticut in 2018 found that plates exposed to hand dryer air for just 30 seconds averaged 18 to 60 bacterial colonies per plate. And a study done in London in 2016 found that jet hand dryers disperse 190 times more viral particles than the use of a paper towel would. Uh, the image below is from the UV sanitizer company Phone Soap's viral video about the study they conducted. And you can see in the Petri dish on the right, that's all the bacteria that was grown just from being held under a jet hand dryer. <clears throat> One of the biggest concerns that people have mentioned to me as I've been collecting signatures for this project and discussing it with people was the environmental aspect. Paper towels, however, especially the commercial paper towels that we would be using, you know, not your bounty roll of paper towels, they're made from recycled materials. It's like a mix of recycled materials and new wood pulp. And most commercial paper towels are made with high levels of post-consumer recycled content, which includes things like magazines and cereal boxes that wouldn't decompose quickly if they were just put into a landfill. Paper towels, on the other hand, have a composition of thin fibers that allows them to decompose more quickly. So recycling them into paper towels actually helps keep these things out of the landfills. Additionally, unless they're used to clean oil or grease, which shouldn't be a problem, hopefully, in school bathrooms, paper towels are compostable. So if we're looking to reduce our waste, this is a potential option as well. Finally, I just have some student comments that people said to me either while I was asking for their opinions or as they were actively signing the petition. One in particular that I wanted to call attention to is on the left side of the screen about the child who spilled his water bottle. Um, and this is a recurring issue of people are clumsy. Things get knocked over, it happens. I know I've done it. 
And I just keep hearing about people spilling their water or spilling a tumbler of tea or something and not having having anything to clean it up. Once in my math class, the teacher actually had to leave and go find a science classroom to borrow paper towels from to clean it up. And I've heard stories of teachers actually using a piece of lined paper to try and soak up a spill. Um, there was also one day that was really rainy. I'm sure Mr. Sayutari could tell you about it if he was still here, where everyone was walking into the school dripping wet. It was a major slipping hazard on the floors. We had teachers standing in the hallways going, don't walk there, it's slippery. And there wasn't really anything we could do about it because we didn't have any paper towels. We had students going into the bathroom and taking their shoes off, holding them under the dryers, like in an attempt to get the water out of them, which didn't work so well, as you can imagine. Um, finally, I have been told by multiple different sources that some of the faculty bathrooms actually have paper towels, which just seems to be an odd discrepancy to me. So I wasn't sure if you were aware of that, but yeah, that's, hang on, all I have. And this is a list of my work cited if anyone wants to do additional research or corroborate mine. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you so much, Thank Jacqueline. You. I really appreciate the time you put into this, and we did receive a copy of the presentation also in advance, so we have your work cited and all of your information. I do have a copy of the signatures as well. Super. Well, should, yeah, okay. you can leave that with us. That would be great. Okay. Do any members of the committee have any questions or comments for Jacqueline? I would just say I have two hands, and I have the need to dry them from time to time. And I think you pointed to some valid um, experiences that I've shared with some of your points. Thank you. <laughs> would you like to sure, Bill, if you'd like how, to. How did you get the signatures? Um, so essentially it started when I just decided that I needed to do something about it. And I talked to my mother and she said, you could start a petition. And then <laughs> I walked up to my best friend at the beginning of the school day and said, hey, do you want to sign this petition? And she said, sure. <laughs> and then we ran into another friend and he shouted in the hallway, who wants to sign a petition to get paper towels back? And <laughs> people came running over. And then from there, I walked around during lunches. Um, one of my teachers, I we had a test, I didn't have anything to do after the test. So he let me leave and go collect signatures during that lunch period. So I went into the library after school one day. It was amazing things. things. So about how many are there? Um, there are 480, 400, 400 something. So about 50%. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, Bill, if you'd like to end. Sure. And first, I, I think that your, your presentation is very good, and I, I really appreciate it. I am I, um, very impressive for a young lady of your age to come to the public and speak like this. I think that's great. Good for you. Thank you. Um, second, uh, my personal preference is paper towels myself. I, I, I like those and I prefer it. Um, the history is the environmental club, the high school environmental club petitioned for the hair, the hand dryers. They actually fundraised and installed them. Well, I installed them, but they bought them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the cost was more the power to bring the power to the area and install them. But the Tyson units, the ones you put your hands in, um, were very expensive and were the high end ones. Uh, we put the cheaper ones in that are not as nice, maybe more difficult. And um, the, the reason we put them in, the petition was for the environment to save the paper and the waste. Um, that's you know that's one argument, and you know that that was what the argument was of the environmental club at the time. So um, it did definitely save us money. It saved time and made mess because if you do have paper, it does, you know, get on the floor, it does get around the bathroom. It's not that it's a big deal, but it, it is a time time uh, thing. So it was a positive. When COVID came, you know, we, we stopped everything, what we were doing, and we put paper towels back in everywhere. It really didn't matter about the cost and the time. We had funding for all these COVID issues. Um, so we did put paper towel back in all the bathrooms. Um, but we have taken it out in the main bathrooms. And we do have some in still some single stall bathrooms that we don't use a lot. Um, that so it doesn't, it's not a big deal. And we still have some supplies. So there's a couple of reasons why we have left them in some of the bathrooms. Um, but you know, it, it is a personal preference. It is money, it is time. Um, and it, it's something that we just chose to, you know, remove. 
So I'd like to share the history. Um, I think it's a great uh, request. Um, you know, and and uh, and you know, once I said I, it's my personal preference, but I don't do my personal preference. I do what I think is best for the, the school and the district as a whole, and the cost and the money of the paper is is significant. Are Are you aware of products that are sustainable? I mean, I see some ads for bamboo based paper towels, things that don't involve trees. So the answer is they'll probably be more expensive. I haven't looked into the cost, but I assume they're more expensive. And you still need to throw it away. So it's the other end, too. Right. We won't be able to recycle hand paper towels, I don't believe, you know, because they will have stuff on them. I don't think we don't, we don't recycle, we do cycle paper and cans, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't, we don't recycle that, you know, that is that impossible. No. So nothing's impossible. Um, once again, it's it's up to the board and the schools. You know, I, I worked at your pleasure. Um, I, I agree that it's it's a nicer thing to have. Um, it comes at an expense. When did we do this? When did we switch to the hair the, the hair stuff? Yes. Hand dryers. So and we didn't do it one year. We we put the Tyson hand dryers in. I think they were a thousand bucks. Tyson. 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 Oh yeah, that's nice. The chicken hair dryer. Yeah, we started cooking the chicken in the bathroom about ten years ago, plus or minus, and we slowly put them in. And and we, you know, you'll see that there's a bunch in the bathrooms. They're very old. They've been here a long time, ten plus years, I guess. And then the the newer ones aren't as old. Wasn't that we we really completed the task right probably a couple years before. COVID came, yeah. and we removed all the paper towels right before COVID, and then right. boom, COVID came. You know, we put them all back. So, what are the criteria? So, it's we see a little bit of both, right? I'm just trying to think what would the criteria be to to prefer one over the other. I mean, there's student preference. There's your research, which is very good. Yes, very persuasive, and there's student preference, but that could wax, that could swing back and forth. Every decade, so you don't want to rip things out and put them back in. So, what other criteria could be used to decide what's better? I, I just think out loud. I, I think that the places that have no scruples do both. Mm -hmm. You do both because then you can decide, yeah, yeah. and you're not worried about the money. Right. So right. that's the decision. If you're not worried about the money, and you want to give people the option, right. do both. In 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 this facility here, I believe that we used to only have. Um, you know, hand dryers. And then when COVID came, we put both. Right. I don't know if it makes sense to take them out. I don't know how much they're used. Right. So in the low use areas where we still have some product, we leave all. Mm -hmm. We haven't made a decision to wholeheartedly remove them all. Right. Our biggest facility is the high school. Yeah. So we will take the biggest amount of material and time and effort. So the cost was the main reason we removed that. And uh, you know that we, because we have enough hand dryers in there, we didn't get the best ones. Some of the ones are good, but we definitely got a more economical one. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, Jack. And this, I'm sure, will continue to be a topic of discussion for us. But we really do appreciate your time and your work on this and sharing those adventures as well. Thank you so much yes. for your time and consideration. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Good Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you Should I leave the signatures? Please, yeah, yeah. I can take that. Get to the boards. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Our next item on the agenda. Do you want to go into Pulse and HVAC, or do you want to? Yes. Okay. I, I would love to do that as long as they're here. Is um, are do we have guests? We do. Justin and Blair are here. Yes, can you promote them? They're promoted. Oh, they already are. Yes. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. So, uh, Justin, why don't you introduce yourself? Certainly. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Justin Kababic with BL Companies. I am the, the project manager for the Polson Middle School uh, HVAC study. Thank you, Justin. And we also have Blair uh, Richardson, who is with um, Colliers, who's helping us manage the project. Blair, would you like to say anything? Good evening. Hi. What are you saying? Good evening. Oh, thank you, Blair. So <laughs> I'm going to turn it right over to uh, Justin to just give a brief update 
and where we are on the projects for the heating and air conditioning at Polson. Certainly, thank you, thank you, Bill. Uh, so I was wanted to to start with what we've completed so far. <clears throat> there was a there was a bunch of different phases to this uh, the study. Uh, so what we've completed so far is we've done our mechanical and electrical survey of the school. Uh, we went out there a couple times. We had to take measurements um, to create an energy model. So we had to measure the windows, the ceilings, the walls uh, for a lot of different spaces and uh, same thing with the electrical service. We took all, all the what's there for electrical gear. Uh, we also took a full inventory of all your mechanical gear. Um, we have since taken all that, that information and we have inputted it into our energy modeling software. We've created a, a full model of the building that we're going to be using moving forward. Uh, right now, it is just inputted with what your current existing building systems are. Uh, and what we'll be doing <clears throat> as we move forward is put in uh, traditional system option one, traditional system option two, and geothermal system. Uh, and what we'll be able to do is see uh, what the energy savings would be with the different systems. Uh, so what's currently in process, uh, it started this morning, uh, Sima well drilling was out there and started drilling a test well uh, at the edge of the baseball field. And uh, it's going to take another day or so to complete the well drilling and putting in the piping. Uh, they fill the hole with grout um, and it's going to take about a week for it to cure, after which they'll come back and they'll run a thermal conductivity test. The, the thermal conductivity test uh, basically is you heat up the water that's in the pipe that's in the ground and you circulate it for 48 hours and you measure how quickly the heat dissipates from that pipe. And the results of that will give us an indication of the capacity of the ground underneath the ball field to, to hold heat or disperse heat. Um, while that is going on, we've been working on a narrative of the two traditional systems. When I say traditional, I'm basically referring to stuff that's non-geothermal. Um, we're also proceeding with uh, the electrical study, generator study, and the fire protection study. Um, once we get the geothermal uh, conductivity test back, we are going to work with our partner firm and they're going to do some modeling and we're going to determine uh, how many wells we can fit in the field, how much heat we can dissipate from that. And from there, we can finish our narrative and, and system options by determining what capacity we have. Uh, once we've determined what the systems are, uh, we're going to send it to a cost estimator. They're going to give us a breakdown of the different system costs at a pretty high level. Um, once we have that system cost, we're going to come back, put it into a life cycle cost analysis to compare the energy savings to the, the cost of the different systems. Uh, and that will allow us to finish up a report. Uh, last time I met with you guys, I indicated that we were trying to aim for the end of December to do this report. Uh, the well drilling has taken a lot longer to get started. Uh, and because of that, we're going to have to kind of push the schedule back a little bit. We're currently aiming for January to get you the, the report. Thank you, Justin. Um, very excited about where we are. Of course, it always takes a little longer than we'd like. Um, anticipating um, once we get the report, we'd like to have a committee. Um, Catherine Hart, who's the principal, I'd like her to be involved. Um, of course, we have uh, Blair, you know, who's given our technical advice. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Justin with uh, BLs, so they can help us with the recommendations on the advice and the technical stuff. Um, Catherine can just understand the project. It's going to affect their school. And I was hoping that we, I could get at least one other committee member from the facilities committee um, before we make a final recommendation on which way we're going to go. Uh, anticipating that we might be short on the cost for the geothermal because we plan, we didn't plan for the geothermal. Um, we'll look at fundraise, you know, fund options that might make that neutral. Um, also, at the same time, Justin is putting in the full generation full generator for the, for the town to use the building as a warming station and for, for some kind of shelter needs. Um, we don't have all the funding for that, but we'll have the design at least. 
So it's going to be a big project. The complication of what we choose and how we make this project work is going to be the complication. So, um, Justin, anything else to add? I just wanted to clarify that we're doing the, the study, which is a report. We won't have a full design. So like when you refer to the generator, we'll have an idea of, say, it's a 500 kilowatt uh, generator. Uh, rather than having the full generator design, we're going to know what that is. And then the next phase would be to do a full design for the generator. So just Yes, to thank you. So if I wasn't clear on that, he's going to give us three proposals. And I, I say schematic design might be a little less than that, but, you know, they'll work. And these are the costs associated with these ideas. Then we need to choose which project we want before we can finalize the design and, and then bid the work out and get it done. So I, the, the design work, although that's complicated, the decision making is going to be complicated. And then how we're going to get it done is going to be the next really complicated stuff. So, so, so we'll have a decision point while we have um, an inter at an interval where we have like range of magnitude cost comparisons. Yes. Okay. And some general ideas on how long we'll take to do the project and some ideas. But we won't have any detailed plans or any kind of detailed schedule. We'll have some general ideas. Would we also be able to get an idea of, of payback time in terms of if we did go geothermal, how much we would save each year on uh, electrical costs? And, and yes, that, that's the uh, life cycle cost analysis. That's okay. part of the study, life cycle cost analysis. So, yes. And will the report include? Um, any advice or recommendations or research into whether there are current programs uh, that can help offset the cost, like grant programs? We've been looking into those at all the time. We, we did a little sidestep to see if we could apply for the state $150 million project. Um, the deadline was December 1st. That would have been huge for us to get that accomplished, but I think we could have. But the real problem was we have to complete the project yeah. Within a year, uh, no of 24 it. was it December of 24? And there's mm -hmm. we could never bid it out and get it done and keep the school open and running. Right. So there was no way we could meet the deadline. So we passed on that. There's an there's an IRA uh, fund that used to only be for for profits. Now non for profits can get the funding. You know it's new, so we haven't looked into the details on that. And then we expect some other kind of opportunities that we might not know about. So. We have been looking at it. Justin has been, you know, assisting us. We have Blair with Collier's helping us. So we, we do have a lot of um, options that we're looking into. We do not have a clear plan at this time, but we're hoping that we can find something that makes the geothermal palatable financially so we can do it. Yeah. We don't have an answer yet. Yeah. It might delay the project, but maybe it's worth delaying to get it done the right way. <laughs> Thank you. Anything to add, Blair? Nope. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, if Justin, anything else? Um, not at this time. Hey, I really appreciate you guys and your time and effort on this and look forward to uh, getting the report. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Thank you guys you. have a good yeah. Thanksgiving. Thank Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions of me on this project? I, I you know, like I said, we're not going to need the committee until it sounds like beginning of January um maybe middle of january um, of course the whole community is welcome but i, I would really like a small meeting of this team to sort of make a recommendation not that we have to go with that but i think the small group we could you know the principal these two gentlemen one of the board members um so we'll be thinking about that i know emily got choice through the short strip i think the best uh, <laughs> so um if there's no other questions, I, I can uh, go further into my update. Is that the next item? Yeah, sounds great. The next item is a big brown. Oh, like facility updates. Yes, so, that's what I thought. Yep, Daniel Hand, Brown, and I know we wanted to talk about the, so, um, the Brown School K1 East project too. Great. Um, so I'm going to start with Polson, continue with Polson. We all know that the bids uh, were received and we're just waiting for the lockers have been ordered. and. We're anticipating the lockers to be in the summer. Um, you know, we're just waiting. Yeah. Um, the tennis courts, um, the tennis courts, you know, are full steam ahead. We hope to uh, have the bids out uh, right after Thanksgiving. 
Um, we hope to have the bids back right before Christmas. Um, once again, um, I'm looking for a committee. Um, it will be uh, Stantec is the engineering firm that was selected. I have hired a construction manager to help me manage it. I'll be myself, uh, AD, Chris Farrell. And if one of the committee members would like to uh, be involved in that, the proposal should be back right before Christmas. Um, I'd like to review as quick as possible and, and make a selection and recommendation to the board of selectmen um, at their first available meeting right after the first of the year. So uh, I know that they <clears> meet <throat> this the uh, 19th, um, so the proposals are due on the 20th. So I'm going to try to get on the next meeting. I know it's Christmas and New Year's in there, but if we could look, look review it, and then if we have to interview, we can try to get that done. Um, and what, what's the timeline for that work that will be done? It'll hopefully get done next summer. Summer of 23. Yes. Okay. It's a very tight schedule. Yep. Um, best case is 10 weeks. That's the max we have. Um, you know, one firm told me it was 14 okay. weeks. So if the weather works and everything works perfectly, we'll, we won't have any disruption. Yep. But my gut says that, you know, we'll have it almost done. There'll probably be some lines or fencing or something that will happen during the school. That's not my plan, mm -hmm. but I think we have to be realistic about it. You know, last summer we, we didn't complete projects that we planned way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, so it just so it was steel. You could get the steel, right? For the solar panels. Right. Yeah. yeah. That was a month late. Yeah. Um, and they said it was COVID, but, you know, we planned that in November, right. this time the year before. So I was pretty upset with the company when they told me that because they could have they could have ordered the stuff early, yeah. but they they thought they didn't need to, right. you know, and so, you know, things change and it's just, it's, it's a little more difficult in today's world. And, and uh, you know, we know that disruption of the kids and the students is, is a big priority. So that's a problem. Um, So that's tennis. Any questions on the tennis courts? Can you remind everyone how many courts? Are yes, done? absolutely. Six. The design is for six courts. And we talked about putting infrastructure in for the lights and designing the lights, but we, we didn't talk about putting the lights up. We didn't fund it prop enough. Um, we do need to go to planning and zoning um, and probably wetlands. Mm -hmm. So we, we will have a public meeting on it through the town uh, to show the lights, where they're gonna be, where the courts are gonna be, the impact on the wetlands, the impact on the neighborhood. Um, I don't anticipate um, much Opposition because you really can't see the tennis courts from anywhere, but you never know. It is going to be a public forum and you will find out. But and I'll keep you posted. Um, we're going to apply the same time we're bidding it out, so we're going to apply in December. And but with a public hearing, we don't think it'll be heard until January, and hopefully, we'll have a decision. But you never know, it might go into February. Um, at the same time, we're going to bid it out and try to get the contractor on board so we can get it scheduled. Anything else on the test sports? Are there any materials for that that we anticipate supply chain problems with? No. Good. That is my understanding. It's concrete, fencing, um, nothing that we've heard of any problems. Electrical conduit. Well, the electrical conduit, no, but you know, the electrical gear and switch gear that has been problematic, but we're Not proposing to put in just the conduit. Yeah. Any other questions on the tennis sports? That'd be great. Okay. Maybe some pickleball. Oh, that was part of the requirement. I was told today that that was Just part to of the Just I know that was a, um, a, a something that was brought up by the um, ARP committee, that there's a lot of interest from in the community about pickleball. Oh, somebody told me that it was a requirement. To... It's a strong encouragement. Oh. Or... So it depends, I guess, what we talk about. Well, we'll we'll look into the pickleball. It's gonna be part of the options and we're gonna we're gonna keep that it's just painting lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it won't have anything to do with the you know construction design or schedule. Great. So the next project yep. we're gonna, is the high school stage lighting. A BL company, different department, um, has gone out, met with the staff again. Um, just to make sure what's out there, make sure what they want um, before they finalize the design. So we hope to have that design sort of same time frame right before Christmas, um, maybe a little after Christmas. 
um, so we can finalize the design and get it out the bid. Um, we're hoping for next summer as well. You know, that might be a little bit of problematic, the lights, the electrical, um, you know, we're hoping and optimistic for next summer, uh, but I'm a little concerned about the schedule. Once again, we'll need a committee for a recommendation. Um, I, I haven't talked to TJ about it, but I assume he would be maybe one of the staff members, myself, the BL company uh, representative, and the Colliers, which will be Blair, um, and then maybe one of the facility committee members. Uh, and I'll keep you posted. It's all going to happen the same around time. So it's going to be an active time right after the first of the year. Any questions on the lights for the, Brown, for the high school? Well, I'm sorry, just real quick. Can you remind me? Sure. What are you going to need a committee decision on? Well, just when we bid out stuff and we make recommendations to who we hire. So the answer is we don't need a committee. I like to keep the school involved and the Board of Education involved when we're spending significant dollars. And this is a design that's going to impact a lot of people. It's not just replacing lights. It's not just fixing the roof. It's, you know, an activity at the school that affects all the yeah. users. That's like kind of shedding on the section with some yeah. of these firms, just to have a member of the facilities committee there and transparency. Yeah. And, part that, of and keep it neutral and fair that they're not yeah. my brother-in-law or Paul. They're not yeah. Dave's brother. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, they're not any, there was no, 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 you know, ethical issue. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I've been, since I've been doing it, it's never been a problem, but we like, that's why we open them up in public. Everything's public. And so we have a committee of a representative group that participates in the selection. Yeah, I understand that. I just, I thought we had already picked PL. We did. So I didn't know what other decision points. That We're going to get it out. And let's just say my company might be the low bidder, but your company is not. And we, we decide that we want your company because of. Yeah, it's a better situation. Also. Yeah, you, your schedule's better, your product's better, and you don't pick my company. It wasn't just yeah. Emily picking it, it was a committee. Yeah. Makes, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's above board. When everyone's fair. We use a reasonable criteria. It has nothing to do with who you are or what you know. It has to do with what you're capabilities are of the job and the criteria that the committee sets on a fair and open uh, market. I also would just say for the um, meetings that I've sat in on and scope for the interviews, it's been really enlightening for me. I feel like I'm able to understand more of the process and report yeah. up to the full board, more what's happening. And we have an awful lot going on. So it's nice to know more about it. Just the rich and for all of us, the, I think. The committee last time or two times ago, uh, designated Emily or yeah. her designate. So that's right. Yeah. The committee has already done it. I'm just bringing you guys up to yeah. speed in case commit in case the chairman is busy and she asks you to give you the nod. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, You'll know what you're getting involved in. You know, and, and really we have hired experts in the field that I have total confidence in that will advise us on what why the ten dollar extra cost is worth it or why it's not and you know we can listen to them and make a decision based on facts that we say hey we really agree that that ten dollars is worth it and we're going to get this thing or you know what we really don't think we need the ten dollar thing appreciate your input we're going to go we're going to save the ten dollars and use it for something else so it, it's just it's a it's a really good way we do it and we have professionals give us advice that are unbiased. Yeah. They work for us, giving us their opinion. Like Blair. Like Blair. Yeah. Blair is our representative. He he is an expert in the field and he solicited companies and then he asked some questions about the engineering and design. We'll have the design team plus Blair helping us and giving us guidance on you know what companies to select. We don't need to do the low bid or we need to do the, the best bid for the yeah. town and and to get the project that we need. Thank you. So that's the high school stage. Um, the Brown School, uh, K1 East Wayne, um, they're gonna do a presentation tonight at the board, board level. So I wasn't really gonna get into too much of that. All I really wanted to get into, which is the key, is we expect the bids to be back uh, on the 29th. I have requested a committee member for the 2nd of December or 1st and 2nd. 
um, from 10 to 1. And one of us is out of town. I will be out of town those days. I, I knew this, this was set up. <laughs> so I would kindly request if any members of the facility committee, we can sort this out, up, um, are available to sit in on those scope interviews and meetings with the contractors and the committee. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry, we'll build the beer. And it's either on Zoom or in person. That I, right? That's the plan. We haven't agreed on anything yet. It's going to be the committee's choice and the contractor. Um, you know, Zoom is so successful now. Mm -hmm. It's easy for people. So if, for example, the contractor wants to bring in his mechanical guy and he's not there, he can come Zoom in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be maybe a hybrid. They're closed meetings. These are private meetings that we're interviewing firms. Um, they're not open to the public, so it's easier for us to do the Zoom in and out. Um, so a committee member could do that if they would so choose. And uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that we can do it those two days. So let me know if you're available. Um, it's a, it is a really interesting process. You'll learn a lot and enjoy it, I promise. What are the dates? Uh, the first and second? Yes, yeah, Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday. From 10 to 1. <laughs> I could be available on the second. I'm not available on the first. Uh, you need the same person for both? <laughs> yes, yeah, I can do both. You can do both. Galen, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, because you want to hear both, because you want to make a decision on both. You'll have another chance, Stephen, I'm sure. Don't worry. Comments. I'm sure. I <laughs> thank you, Galen. Thank you, Galen. I'll keep you posted. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really have anything else on the ground school. I'm happy to answer questions. It's, I think the plan's going well. Uh, we had the walkthrough. Um, Tecton's doing a great job answering the questions and, and being on top of it. Uh, Colliers has stepped up too and assigned a construction manager to help manage it. So, it, you know, it, it's, the pressure's on because it's going to be very time consuming. I'm hoping that we can make a rec recommendation on December 6th or 19th to the Board of Selectmen to award the contract. For the new school. For the renovations at Brown. At Brown School. Okay. Yes, December 6th. Excuse me, I'm going to take a look. The new school, uh, we're going to get a presentation tonight. Um, that's all I have for the projects. Okay. Um, Update on uh, you know one of our facilities, the high school our rooftop unit failed again. Um, this particular unit failed three times. Um, I don't remember the first time. I think it was in 2015, uh, and then again uh, last fall, and we just replaced it in December. It's uh, failed again. Uh, I'm extremely upset with the contractor, um, and I've talked to them and. You know, they were told once to come to the board tonight. I was looking for an update. Didn't really get one. Um, so, not only am I concerned about getting the parts and fixing it, I'm concerned that, you know, I just fixed it and it failed. I just fixed another one because I didn't want it to fail because it was original parts. <laughs> so, I'm concerned. I'll keep you guys posted. Forgive my ignorance here, but does that air? Unit handle heat as well, or just uh, air conditioning in the, in the warm weather? It handles the heat, and that's the problem because the fan failed to yeah. wreck the coil. It's the heating coil is filled with water, and that flooded school. That's this is probably the, the limited. This is the quickest stopping of the water and the least destruction. <laughs> You're used to it by now. Well, we have to know the drill. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it right. Yes, it, it happened seven. right away. My guys are the only ones that got wet and the ceiling <laughs> tile on the floor. Wow. So, you know, the staff was fine. You know, the classrooms were fine. The hallway and the ceiling tile basically got, okay. got wrecked. Before it, it happened overnight, and yeah. it flooded into the downstairs and it flooded into the classrooms so we're able to use the rooms just not the hallways and you know we had it up and running you know cleaned up and the ceiling tile back you know within a couple of days 
Um, so no disruption to learning spaces or anything? Not at the start, no. Great. Great. Okay. Wendy, save the day. You're welcome. Well, all the more reasons to push that HVAC work along. Yeah. That's very frustrating. Bill, you may have been here. We, we heard that that was cited in the uh, accreditation report as well, the um, HVAC. Yes, and then the day they came is the day it leaked. Yeah. And it's water spewed all over the place. And, uh, you know, there's nothing we could do. I mean, you know, we had, couldn't, couldn't put ceiling tile up and this water still pouring down. You know? Of course. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Yeah. So, so, yes, you know, it's, it's, it's very disheartening. And it's, you know, I had a hard conversation with, with the Johnson Controls. Who, who, Put it in today, and it, you know, of course, of course, some salesman called me last week, you know, and I played it to him because he wanted more work. I'm like, listen, dude, you know, not looking good. Yeah, and their company is full of very smart people, and the, the people are competent. It's just the the service and getting the parts and the bureaucratic process, I guess, on their side, and, and the ownership of the problem is. There must be a huge corporation because they don't, they're not getting it. Johnson Controls is a huge, yeah. huge company. Well, thank you for the update on that. Like, yeah, we'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. I, once okay. again, my real concern is in repairs. Right. What's going to happen again? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? We, we won't attack the messenger, Bill. No, sir. <laughs> it looks all right. I take it personal myself, and I, you know, it's one of the hardest, you know, things that I deal with here. You know, in, in my years here, is that those rooftop, yeah. especially with the with the COVID when 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 it was really a problem. And now it's just damaging repair. Uh, so it is what it is. We're still working in the schools, more working. We got heat. It's just not working. Well, yeah. I don't have any other uh, updates that I can think of, but I'm open for any requests or suggestions. Any questions or requests from the committee? No. Thank you, Bill. And Wendy, do we have any members of the public as part of our public comment portion? We do not. Anyone in person? Any members of the public would like to comment? Okay. All right. Well, we will adjourn.